Detonating a thermonuclear weapon on the surface of the moon may sound more like a wild scheme from a deranged comic book rather than a project initiated from inside the United States government. But in the late 1950s, as the height of the Cold War approached, the United States of America was at odds with the former Soviet Union, both attempting to posture and propagandize their way to win a geopolitical dispute that lasted nearly 50 years. Making matters worse, there was also a burgeoning space race ongoing, one in which the United States was initially losing after the Soviets launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik 1, into space in 1957. After the launch of Sputnik, the perceived technological gap between the United States and the Soviet Union caused an internal crisis amongst Americans known as the Sputnik Crisis. This crisis triggered the creation of NASA and the beginning of the space race as we knew it. The US soon responded by launching their own satellite, Explorer 1, and then even for a time, considered detonating a nuclear bomb on the surface of the moon. This experiment, known as Project A-119, was obviously never carried out, but is every bit as odd as it sounds. The project began as new research into nuclear blast was ongoing starting in 1949 when the Air Force Special Weapons Center began studying the environmental effects of nuclear blast across many of the nuclear test ranges, including at Bikini Atoll, Inuitak Atoll, and the famed Nevada test sites. By 1957, Edward Teller, the father of the H-bomb, began proposing a detonation test in space where one bomb would be detonated on the moon itself and another one would be detonated well above the moon in order to test the effects upon the lunar surface after the bomb went off. By the end of the 1950s, support within the agency had grown for the project, partially due to the scientific basis proposed by Teller, but also because the media was reporting that the Soviets were planning to do the exact same test, stoking fears amongst the general public. At the time, President Eisenhower knew that the U.S. defense capabilities had fallen far behind that of the Soviets, particularly in terms of missile technology. It was later in November that the Soviet Premier, Nikita Khrushchev, even dared the U.S. into a peaceful shooting match. The world was on edge and the rumors of a Soviet nuclear strike on the moon did not seem so crazy. Long before the Apollo program would land an astronaut on the moon, the Air Force decided to take these rumors seriously and see just how plausible such a scheme could be. In 1958, the U.S. Air Force approached Dr. Leonard Rifle, a renowned physicist working with NASA, and rather bluntly asked him, is it possible to detonate a nuclear device on the moon? Project A-119, as it became, answered this question in what became one of the strangest scientific reports in all of human history. The 10-member team working on the project was composed of Rifle himself, famed astronomer Gerard Kuiper, as well as a bright young 24-year-old physicist named Carl Sagan. These scientists essentially set out to determine would it be possible for the U.S. Air Force to bring hell to a celestial sphere some 384,000 kilometers away. Essentially, America needed to show the world something big like nuking the moon, never mind that the project had no practical purpose, no discernible national security goals, and its sole design was to show the world that the U.S. could do something ambitiously spectacular. Although it has never been revealed, the bomb would likely have been carried to the lunar surface upon a W-25 ICBM or intercontinental ballistic missile. The W-25 warhead was a much smaller and lightweight warhead with a relatively low 1.7 kiloton yield. Comparing this to the little boy bomb used in World War II, which had a yield of roughly 13 to 18 kilotons, it was very small in size. Yet still, this would not even come close enough to push the moon out of orbit as it would take nearly 10 trillion megatons of TNT in order to accomplish that feat. For context, the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated, the Soviet Union's Tsar Bomba, yielded only 50 megatons. The location for the detonation was determined to be the Lunar Terminator, or the line that divides the illuminated and dark hemispheres of the moon. This is essentially the point on a celestial body at which the parent star is tangent. This point would grant the best viewing angle back on Earth so that maximum fire and fury could be seen. 
1959 rolled around, the US ultimately wised up and put a stop to the plan for three primary reasons. Number one, it feared the negative public reaction to such a blast. Number two, there was a thought at the time that the missile could miss the moon entirely, returning to Earth and causing major destruction. And number three, the US feared contaminating the surface of the moon preventing future exploration effort. Fortunately, the US pulled the plug on the program and decided instead to put full resources and attention towards the moon landing which nearly a decade later in 1969 culminated with the landing of Apollo 11. It wasn't long after killing Project A119 in 1967 when the Outer Space Treaty was announced, which now prohibits the use of nuclear weapons or any weapon of mass destruction in orbit, on the moon, or any celestial body in space. With over 109 countries participating in the treaty as of this year, it is unlikely that we will ever hear of such an insane plan ever again. Driven by the intense fear during the Cold War, there was a chance that humanity could have decided to prove for all intents and purposes that it could have killed the moon. Focusing our energy on spaceflight and ultimately landing on the moon was clearly a much better alternative. Thank you so much for watching this video. What other absurd ideas have you heard about that we should discuss on this channel? Comment below on your ideas and be sure to subscribe if you have not already done so.